So let's start with the rapid fire. The first one is, at what age do you want to retire? As soon well as possible. What's your favorite mobile app? Maps. <laughs> How long does it take you to get ready in the mornings? Uh, too long. Uh, most embarrassing moment of your life? Uh, so many of them passage. Okay. Mountains or beaches? Alps. What's the most useful mobile feature you can't live without? Maps. <laughs> Favorite color? Red. What time of day are you most inspired? Evening. How many hours of sleep can you survive on? Five. Fill in the blank. An upcoming marketing trend is blank. I don't care about marketing trends. The city in which the best kiss of your life happened? Innsbruck. Pick one, Android or Apple? Apple. The biggest mistake of your career? Also the biggest success were invested in a system that turned out to be a failure after we changed the strategy. Uh, how do you relax? Reading a book. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? I don't drink any coffee. A habit of yours that you hate? Uh, procrastination. The most valuable skill you've learned in life? Listening to others. Cities or countrysides? Countrysides. And the last one is your favorite Netflix show. Hey, Netflix flow. Lucifer. Okay. All right, so that was the rapid fire round. Uh, now we're going to go on to the bigger questions, which you can answer with as much ease as you like. Okay. Uh, the first one is, what is the industrial metaverse and what does it have to do with digital transformation today? So the industrial metaverse for me is the, the next step on the digital transformation that we see in the industrial area. We've been talking about combining the real and the digital world for a decade roughly. And now we help create digital twins that are, that are dynamic. We combine that um, with immersion. We combine that with collaboration. And that's already what I believe is the digital metaverse. And why is it relevant? Because it helps our customers to, to define their processes and to, to make their factories work before they have to build them. This makes them faster and better. And when they run the factories, they can actually optimize it while they're running them when things around that change. And so what's the most exciting use you've seen till now? In most exciting use for me is things like um, a, a virtual commissioning of a machine. You can actually, before you get the machine delivered, three months early, you get the digital twin of the machine. You can get it up and running, you can optimize your CNC scripts, and you're actually pretty much three months earlier up and producing. And that's really big for customers. Okay. Uh, the next one is, do you think that digital transformation has the potential to revolutionize our industries and infrastructure? I absolutely believe it does. The reason why I believe it is when we have two, two transformations having parallel. We have digital transformation on one side, but we also have sustainability transformation on the other side. This means we have to produce more with less, and this only works if we can have guaranteed stable processes, stable infrastructures that we do not need to worry about. And that's exactly what digital transformation provides. When you look back on a car, you need, I mean, I, I'm old enough to still remember times when you were not sure if your car starts in the morning. Today, I mean, that, that question doesn't come to your mind anymore. It does. Infrastructures are there, and we don't need to worry about them. And we shouldn't. Production has to function. Now we see when supply chains don't work, how many things are not available. And we can't, we can't hardly cope with that, basically. This is not how things should be in the future. And digital automation will bring us to the point that Infrastructures are reliable at the minimum footprint, helping 
us to go on with our lives as we need to. How will the industrial metaverse, or rather the acceleration of digital transformation, revolutionize industries and infrastructure? This is kind of the same question, but... Yeah. <laughs> what we're going to see is that infrastructure has become a fabric of society. They're there. We don't need to worry about it. We don't need to know about them. They're, they're going to support us also when there's changes, more people moving to cities, more people needing transport, and so on. On the industrial side, we're going to see uh, a separation into mass production and um, mass customization. And mass customization needs exactly the industrial metaverse to actually happen. So you all get what we want to have and still maintain sustainability in the process. And with your expertise in operational management, what steps do you think need to be taken in order to reduce the complete production timeline to a minimum? The first thing is we have to be able to design things digital and the production process, they go hand in hand without needing to build prototypes. We can test them out digitally and then we can simply, in, in a certain way, download that into the production flow. And this will squeeze timelines dramatically and make things a lot faster. And how can businesses tap into the potential of industrial metaverse? What are things you have to look into as a business leader right now? I think the first big focus is what are the main questions where digital can help you? And these are business specific questions, they're not generic ones. And then find yourself a good partner that helps you on that way. Because also for our customers, it's a digital transformation on their own. They need to understand what digital helps and doesn't help and to acquire skills. We need a partner, a trusted partner to help them move on that way. And in the beginning, the customers should not take the, the, the big all-in approach. I invest millions, but I should take step-by-step, step, getting services in there, helping them, helping um, them build up, let's say, the return of the factory, optimization of the production line, those self topping, then take step after step on this way. And what are some of the steps in this step after step thing? You know, the first thing from my, from my perspective is we need to have connectivity of the most important machines. We need to create a digital, a simple digital representation of the process, then start optimizing that production process, seeing the benefits, uh, seeing how it frees up capacity, uh, adding then your um, augmenting your production or uh, manufacturing execution system so that you can actually run more complex workloads, upgrading certain machineries to get more data out of that, Pro getting AI into the processes so that your machines run more efficient, then take the step towards um, having self-configuring um, production workflows. But this is really step after step goes over a couple of years. So in your opinion, is the industrial metaverse a game changer in operational technology? For me, it is a game changer and it's a game changer that in the first part is already available now. Only the first part is available now. Yeah, so the industrial metaverse in its full glory with everything that you can have Dynamic little twins, uh, immersion, uh, collaboration, digital asset can be traded. All that will still take a while to be complete there and and harmonize across all industrial areas. But you have already today a big part of, of topic that you can already today get. Dynamic little twin, you have stories around that. Um, collaboration is there. Immersion, in certain cases you can do. Uh, augmented reality, for certain p things you can do not for all cases yet. You have already things like digital commissioning of a machine, of a plant. So they all exist and there's still the interfaces in between them. Those interfaces will disappear over time and they will become seamless. But already today you get a vast portion of, of that value that you can have today and it's, you don't have to wait for in 10 years or 15 years to get to, to the good, uh, get to the perfect situation in the future. You don't have to have that. And what do you think of machine learning? Why do you think machine learning is increasingly being considered today's most important and irreplaceable technology? Well, machine learning is, is extremely important because it helps you to make sense out of a large set of data where it's unclear how this data actually relates to each other. Uh, it helps to build models to understand complex situations and react also to unknown situations. And that's, that's one big part. The second promise actually is 
we are facing a, a, a big challenge with experienced workforce, with experts. And we see more and more the experts retiring and we see not enough new people coming up. Machine learning can also help to preserve what the experts know today to have a guaranteed quality of decision making in the future. Both things I think are, are extremely relevant. There's a third topic from my perspective as well. Uh, we see massive advances in machine learning. It's not only any more simple neural networks. We have deep neural networks, all these, these you know, things like chat G and GPT, uh, GPT and so on. Um, the, every two years, we see a massive step forward. We have now the first generic deep learning model existing. So more and more tasks can be transferred to an AI system that we thought was impossible five years ago. And so what are some of the ways in which Siemens is using all this technology? I mean, customers don't want to buy AI. Customers want to solve a business problem. So what we do is we take AI components and we bring them into our software. So we have, for example, for we have a digitized production process, we have AI systems that help you to optimize the process when there is a, uh, a certain spare part or a certain partner coming in. So you have to change your, your production schedule on a very short notice. Or if you see uh, a malfunctioning of a machine, how can you work around that so you, you can take the machine out, but you, your factory still stays online and producing at high levels. Those type of things we do, uh, we've invested massively over the last five, six years in something we call MI Core, which is core models of AI that we can leverage in different situations, from predictive maintenance to process optimization. We created a lot of um, knowledge in ontologies. How do you make data making sense? And data can be can be combined with data from other vendors, other uh, ecosystem partners, other customers, so they can actually interact without having to build integrations. All of these things we've invested massively in. We have an organization of a few hundred um, data scientists centrally and another 300 or 400 more in the businesses. So we're driving that for our customers, but we're not selling AI, we're using AI to solve customer problems. And how long have you been using it for? Well, the first investment we did in AI was about 20 years ago um, and massively wrapping it up about 10 years ago. But already 10 years ago, I was in the organization we were 150 data scientists there. Oh, wow. Okay. So the last question for you is more of a personal kind. What would you be doing in your life if not this right now? <laughs> if I wouldn't be do doing those things, I would probably sit in the countryside, uh, in a woodshed and do some work on wooden furniture um, and read some books. Okay. All right. Uh, could you just say one last time uh, your name, your job title and... Uh you're here at the Mobile World Congress. Okay, so I'm Gerhard Press from Siemens. I'm Senior Vice President for Accelerator Portfolio and Digital Business. And I'm here at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. That was amazing. It's great listening to you.